Hello beautiful people everywhere. What is it like to experience mania? What happens to your life? How do you cope? How do you learn to live again? These important questions and many more are answered by my guest and friend Holger in this interview. Please stay watching until the end and let him know in the comments how much you appreciate him sharing his story. Enjoy. So, hi, Holger, how are you? Right. I, was looking forward, I was looking forward to our interview, to be honest. Yeah, me too. I'm yeah. excited. It, it's a long time. Uh, so, the, so our listeners know where, and where you are. Uh, where are you at the moment, Holger? If I'm at home Germany. in Germany, south of Stuttgart. Oh, nice. Very good. So you're not too far away from where, where I was born, Holger, in Altena. It's not too far away from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe in European kilometers, it's a, it's a long way, but in Australian distances, it's it's very close by. Yeah, good. So, um, I wanted to interview you so people could hear your your story, your very unique story, because you got diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder. That's right. Um, how long ago? Ah, uh, that was in probably nineteen ninety five. 95. Because My first diagnosis was bipolar disorder. Uh -huh. And then another psychiatrist uh, thought it was more like uh, schizoaffective disorder. Okay, good. In 1995. So you've been, you've been with this for a while, but um, I have to say that you have, a, I'm not sure if that's your whole life story, but I would consider you very high functioning. Like uh, you've, you've been able to, to, to manage workloads. I mean, where we met was in the mental health system. You were a support worker at the time. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. That was in 2010. Yeah. And um, you came to one of the trainings and that we met, and then you came to uh, some other trainings. Um, so we've had a, an opportunity to form a relationship and a friendship over the years. And uh, I'm curious because I've never asked you ab about your story. So I knew that you had some mental health uh, challenges to overcome, um, but we never had the opportunity to sit down and say, hey, tell me your story. <laughs> and this is that opportunity now. <laughs> yeah. So 1995, you could diagnose, but tell us a little bit more about Holga. Uh, where were you born? Um, your family, what, what's important to you about your past? Yeah, you I was- people to know. Yeah. I was born in 1960 in southwest Germany, which is Reutlingen, um, south of Stuttgart. Mm. I was born and raised there, and uh, I became an electrician, later on electrical engineer. And um, yeah, I, I worked for a few years as an engineer and then quit my job to migrate to Australia. That was in 1992, in February, exactly. So about 30 years ago. Were you feeling unwell by that time before you made that decision or did that come after? No, I was, I was all right. I never knew anything about mental illnesses before I came to Australia. And uh, yeah, I had no idea what depression was or anxiety or man mania, whatever, whatsoever. Right. Yeah. What was your motivation to, to move to Australia? It was a long plan. Uh, it was actually my ex-wife's dream. To be honest right and i joined in and i said okay let's do it all right so you were following somebody else's dream yeah <laughs> i see it's not always a good idea not always a good idea and now she's an ex-wife <laughs> that's interesting yeah. too <laughs> uh, that's how life goes doesn't it i mean yeah i've had a very checkered story like that too so great and and uh, you you arrive in australia and what happened um Australia was in the middle of a recession. I didn't realize that when I was in Germany and the unemployment rate doubled within two weeks after our arrival. Oh, wow. So there was no chance of getting a job as a, a new Australian. Yeah, and, and so that people know a little bit of the, of the context, at the time in the early 1990s, I, if I remember correctly, we had an inflation of 18%, 18%. Is the interest rates or the bank interest rates were eighteen percent, which is huge. Yeah, yeah, 
but yeah, yeah we, we did have it pretty bad in the early 90s yeah um, you found it, you found it hard to get work yeah i actually i had to learn how to do job hunting and how to apply for jobs which is different from germany how? apart from that i didn't have to apply for jobs in germany i just got them <laughs> <laughs> i had connections ah right and also you must have been good at what you do am i is that right i guess yeah yeah but when you you move to another country you haven't proven yourself in that country what did you find in, in your search for work what was the the context for you uh, could you rephrase it i, I didn't so it. what i mean i mean what was the experience like having to go for work um how did that impact you oh uh, i i had very low self-esteem when I came to Australia. I was not very self-confident. Was that when you arrived in Australia or were you okay in Germany? I was okay in Germany. It was, so it happened see. after my arrival. I suddenly became anxious and I lost my drive and energy. I thought oh, I was sad and I didn't know what was going on. What do you put that down to? Oh, later on, I found out it was a depression. Sure, um, but you were not depressed before you arrived. So, no. and then you didn't have a work and you had to look for work and you were in the middle of a recession when you arrived. So there were a few social things happening, right? Sure, that, that ended up being a de depression, but... It was just uh, being anxious about my future and the anxiety is the basics of, of a mental illness, I guess. Yes, yes. Fear. That's how fear it starts. Answers. Fear, actually, yeah. And then you got diagnosed with depression. That came later on. It um, has a bit of a story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before I be became diagnosed, I was desperate for work, and I tried to set up a business, small business, working from home. Yeah. Because I was depressed, I didn't succeed. It just didn't work. Then right. in. Uh, August 1992, I went to the Sydney Boat Show at Darling Harbour and I was talking to a few business people and I suddenly came up with three different business ideas. Wow. And I thought, oh, I'm back on track. Cool. And uh, I went back on the next day and talked to one of the business people and, and said, I want to get into business with you. Set up a charter agency for sailing catamarans on the harbour. Nice. And um, talked to another owner of a boat. So I had two boats to offer. And I paid a deposit for a little speedboat. <laughs> I went to another place. Um, I think Nelson Bay it was. I found a charter boat, a small charter boat. And I thought, oh, that's, that's perfect for my fleet. So I paid another deposit for a sailing catamaran. Right. And uh, I kept going. I was working from 5 a.m. until midnight every day. Okay. Until I crashed. Sure. <laughs> and uh, <That's> right. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I suddenly lost all my energy, my drive, right. my confidence. And a friend of mine took me to the doctor and he diagnosed bipolar disorder. And that's when I started to learn about mental illnesses. I read a book. I was going through leaflets and brochures. And I realized I was manic when I went to the boat show. You self-diagnosed as manic? At least you realized that you were manic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I knew I was depressed before, after my arrival, and depressed when I crashed. What was your internal, besides the depression, I mean, you, you spoke before about your lack of confidence. What happened to the confidence then? I just lost all my beliefs in, uh, in succeeding in a business and uh, I couldn't sell myself anymore, which was easier before. Yeah. And, and you've got this business half started. I invested about 10 grand in, in advertising and equipment and, yeah. and I, I dropped the business. I didn't want to do it any longer. Did you lose a lot of money? Yeah. How was your wife with all of this? She wasn't happy. <laughs> yeah, so I, I had to move out. I moved away from my wife and kids. Two kids? Yeah. That's where the anxiety came from. I was responsible to feed a family. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's huge. How old were they at the uh, time? Three and five. Oh, Jesus. So toddlers, a huge responsibility, yeah? Yeah, it was a bit too much. Were you able to speak English as well as you do now? Or how was um, it? I had, yeah, school English. I had okay. to learn the Australian accent and, and slang. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little different, yes. Yeah. <laughs> when I arrived in, in Australia, I, I arrived with school English as well. And I, I, I was saying, how do you do <laughs> to everybody? <laughs> how do you do? <laughs> Which for English people, that's fine. For Australians, how you game, mate? That's the, better, that's the best. That's what I was getting back and I didn't know what they were talking about. So it's a huge cultural shift. So I guess one question that I have in, in, in my head for, for you, Olga, do you see your, your social context as impacting your, your mental health issues or, or even causing them? Or do you see something else as causing the mental health issues? I think it was separation that was impacting me. Separation, separation from my family in Germany, from friends, colleagues, right? The, the whole network, yeah. The safety net. It's huge, isn't it? So sometimes you need to migrate. You need to go to a different country to understand the, the, how important those the social networks are. Yeah, you um, you have an appreciation for for friends and family and and then your own family breaking down that could not have been very helpful at all i would imagine no that actually i became really ill after i separated and i had one day i had a full-blown mania a panic attack and psychosis at the same time i thought i was dying wow, wow. it must have been very scary yeah hmm. Wait, how did you handle that I went to see the doctor and uh, who started treating me and uh, I lost my job and I moved back from the country to the city, took leave. Mm -hmm. I moved into a backpackers hostel and uh, I was actually having a great time with all these happy backpackers. <laughs> it's, it's contagious. Yeah. That sounds good. Was that the solution? Uh, move for a few months. Backpackers. For a few months, I was okay for a few months, uh, but I decided to go back to Germany to send my furniture with a container to Sydney uh -huh. to my ex-wife. I didn't keep any of the furniture except for one chair right. and my personal belongings. I ended Germany. up staying for the whole year in Germany. I found how a job. You, how was your mental health during that year? I was, I was all right. The treatment was really good. And I was happy. I was a happy person. Back in Germany, I found a job. I found love. And I made my dream come true, which was flying a hang glider. Right. So life was good, looking good? Yeah. But I had to return to Australia to see my kids. Otherwise, I would have lost my visa. Right. So I went back at the end of 94 with the intention to work for a hang glider manufacturer in Sydney. And I, I got the job straight away. Great. which was my first dream job. Congratulations. And is that the end of the story? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I changed career after a few years. Uh, I was working with teller machines and uh, in the coffee industry as a service technician. And in 2005, I attended a weekend seminar with a coaching company mm -hmm. and that changed my life. I uh, did another seminar and I gradually recovered, decided to become a coach myself, did training and set up a coaching practice in Brighton the Saints. Nice place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then in 2010, I changed career again. I became peer support worker. And that's when I met you. Yeah. It was the mental health first aid course, which I did. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that was a good meeting. Yeah. Hmm. And I was going to ask you, by that time, were you, were you on medication or were you on treatment or therapy or, or were you past that? I was you... still on medication. I was seeing a psychiatrist regularly, uh -huh. but I was able to drop lithium and uh, I didn't have any 
I had one mood swing after that, but I was okay after that one mood swing. Yeah, um, I was all right. I was able to work full time, look after other people as a peer support worker. Mm -hmm. So what happened to your to your relationship? Did you have to you parted you parted ways when you left Germany to come and see your kids? Uh, the relationship in Germany. Yeah. Uh, that was um, pretty sad. <laughs> yeah. I I was really suffering uh, when I came back to Australia. But I recovered. I met other women. Of course. <laughs> we are still friends. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, all right. So how what what do you make of all this? I mean, where are you at now um in your in your recovery? I mean, I, I know that you that you have work now, your work, and yeah. you have a coaching business as well. Yes. I set up another practice here in Germany at home, working from home. I call myself a recovery coach now yeah. and peer support worker. I do both peer support and coaching. Oh, brilliant. Do people understand what recovery means in, in Germany or do you have to educate them? It's, I have to educate them. It's, it's fairly new. Germany is a bit behind <laughs> it, is, it comes yeah. to recovery. Yeah. There is uh, the medical model is pretty strong. The medical model you said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is the same that you have behind you. Is that from, from your coaching philosophy? Oh, uh, that's uh, actually the Ben of uh, from my self help group. For the I'm also group. I'm running a self help group together with another two participants. Oh, brilliant, good. And what does it say? Can you translate it for our English? Yeah, it says, uh, help someone else to cross the river with his boat and you will reach the other shore as well. Nice. That is a very important thing of the recovery journey, isn't it, um, Holger? That idea of start focusing on helping others. Yeah. And that has got a healing effect on yourself. That, that's a very important one. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's important. Some... It is their boat, it's not my boat. That's nice. Yeah, so you're a guest on, the, on their boat. Yeah like we are guests on your boat today. You're telling us your story. So we're guests on your boat. Yeah. So how, what, what impact do you see that uh, schizoaffective disorder? You identify with that, with that diagnosis as schizoaffective disorder? Yeah, I think it's, it's quite uh, accurate. Um, I, I have mood swings or I used to have mood swings yeah. and I was able to develop a psychosis uh, in any kind of mood when I was up or down, it didn't matter. Right. That's, I think the difference between bipolar disorder and schizoaffective disorder that people with bipolar there become psychotic when they are really high, when they have a full blown mania. Right. But I was able to become psychotic when I was down as well. What do you what do you feel that you have missed out on because of your mental health issues over the years, or um, maybe you don't feel like you've missed out on anything? Maybe it has added to you. What's yeah, your both. Uh, I mean, I missed out on on money, on income. Okay, that's material. That but... it is. A, I'm glad that you say that because a lot of people don't think about that that impact on people with mental health issues, how much money we lose over the decades that we have been impacted by that. And it's almost impossible to recover from that financial impact. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, I mean, I lost, I lost my family. Uh, I lost my role as a father, uh, but uh, that door closed, but 10 doors opened and- uh, yeah. I wouldn't have experienced what I experienced without separation. Have you lost uh, contact with your kids or are they still around? Or? Uh, we, we are in touch uh, with WhatsApp and uh, Facebook. Oh, nice. Are they in Australia? They're in Australia, yes. And what else? So money, family relationships? Career. Career, you feel yeah. that's impacted? Yeah, but I learned a lot about myself. 
tell us about that. What, what nuggets of wisdom did mental health bring you? Um, that I'm quite flexible and adaptable. Yes, you are. And what else? What, what, what do you think people that, that are listening to you, that have got an interest in, an interest in your story, they need to know? Yeah, what happens when I tell my story to people who have a history of mental illness, they, they change the way of thinking. They, they actually, they have more hope. That happened to me recently uh, when I had a new client. We had a meeting just to get to know each other. And she said, after the meeting, something happened already just by listening to you. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's very, very encouraging. Encouraging and humbling as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice. So basically, you got invo invited to her boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that helped her along too. Yeah. Very good. So, uh, Holger, what advice would you have for a person, first, for a person that is suffering from anxiety, depression, or mental health issues? What would you tell them? What would you like to, what message would you like to give them? I would tell them to focus on their strengths and become self-confident. Also to become aware of their dreams, follow their dreams and set goals. Right. How would they do that if they're, if they're not feeling confident already? What, how would they go about that? Um, I, I can help them to, to gain confidence. I, I've got a a sheet of paper to work with and um, that usually works okay so I'll, I'll i will get that link off you and put it in the description of the video later on so people can go and and um, get a, a, a list that list of you Is that yeah right? it's yeah. unfortunately it's in german, in german language <laughs> yeah, can you translate it <laughs> yeah it's at, it's, least, at least I can get in contact with you. Yeah. All right. It's very simple. It's very simple. Uh, there's right. not much to it. Uh, but I, I don't want to describe it now. All right. But the idea is clarify your goals, make sure, clarify your journey, uh, and have something to live for. Find yeah. out something to live for. Because at, at the moment, they're probably not feeling like there's anything to live for, to be honest. Yeah. But that's with a coach, with a a certain technique or process, people can clarify, can get an, a sense of where they want to go next. And that can be very healing. Is that correct? Yeah. Also, it's important to, to write your dreams down on a piece of paper and visualize your dreams regularly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because dreams do come true that way. Okay. Even if it takes time and work. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good investment. I agree. That's very true. I agree those dreams can come true and they do come true if you if you clarify them on a regular basis yeah. yeah very true and what about for people that have got loved ones that have been diagnosed with bipolar or depression schizoaffective disorder what message would you like to tell parents or uncles or daughters or friends that have got loved ones in that situation i would recommend not to stigmatize stigmatize people who have a mental illness and uh, just accept what them. By that? What do you mean by that specifically? How would they be stigmatizing them? How could they be stigmatizing them? Avoid talking about mental illness to other people, to actually to hide them, to ask them to hide their illness. To not be embarrassed of them? Yeah. yeah. And what to else ask. can they do? To, what else can they do to be helpful to them? Is there something they can do, do you feel? Or just to accept accept them the way they are but isn't that kind of the problem that they have a mental health issue it might be hard for them to accept them exactly how they are what do you mean by that i found that when i came back to germany that people are not open for mental illnesses not as open as australians and i was stigmatizing myself and oh, okay. so i was i saw myself separate from the rest of the society hmm. Does that mean what you would recommend people to make sure that they include? In, yes, inclusion. That's, that's the key word, yeah. Keyword, include them in what you're doing. Make sure that 
you engage them, make sure that you they know that you love them. So, you know, it's it's funny how often we go through life and we don't tell people enough necessarily that we're thinking of them or that we love them. Or sometimes we don't we forget to reach out, you know, and say, Hey, I'm still around. How are you going? I may not be in touch very often, but I love you. I'm, I'm here, you know, <laughs> that yeah. kind of connect. That's, That's right. important. Good. I actually well, work for an much. inclusion company. An inclusion company? Yeah. There's people with called? and without disabilities. Great. Which is a good environment. You like the company? Yeah. Meaning is very important, isn't it, for recovery? Yeah, it is. Having meaning in life, yeah. Thank you very much, Holger, for sharing your story with us. I will put the link to your page or website or whatever link you give me in the description. And uh, I'm sure that people, as they listen to your experience, they can get a bit of an insight of the impacts of mental health issues on people on people's life. And also the other way around, how impactful can life circumstances be on a person's mental health mm -hmm. as well because sometimes you know the so psychosocial factors um have got more of an impact than people realize yeah. yeah and maybe we can change society just enough uh, to be more inclusive to other people to everyone yeah that would be great <laughs> that would be great thank you very much Holger, for sharing your story yeah. thanks for having me it's been a pleasure. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones. Mm -hmm.